what is up everyone the love cup is starting today so let's take a look at some good teams for this format to get you ready for it the love cup is an extremely interesting meta instead of restricting by typing or region like niantic usually does this time pokemon are restricted by their color an impure valentine spirit only red or pink pokemon will be allowed which creates actually a very short list of acceptable pokemon really around 100 to 115 pokemon are uh, acceptable and really only like 30 or 40 ish uh, of these acceptable pokemon are viable in my opinion they are pokemon i would recommend which honestly is not too bad i mean i wouldn't say it's a very varied meta but it's also not that shallow i think it's gonna be a fun one i uh, i feared this meta at first to be honest i felt like it was gonna be a bit uh, like hard countery rock paper scissors ish on first side meaning that there's a lot of one-sided matchups i mean we have the likes of Macargo, uh, medicham uh, scrafty and, and charmers here in in the top meta and also uh, fire types which generally have very hard winning or hard losing matchups which personally i'm not a fan of this means that matches will come down a lot to just having a good alignment winning the lead winning the switch but I believe that won't really be the case at all because there's a lot of extremely flexible options in this uh, meta as well. I have a few I want to highlight. First off, Licky Tongue, of course. We know from Open Grade League, really doesn't have any like extremely hard losing matchups. Same with Alola Mola in this meta. Really no hard losing matchups besides like Grasses. But I'm pretty sure the only Grass in there is Vileplume and or or Cherim in both. You can like do a lot of damage too with. Uh, with psychic uh slowbro galarian uh, we had love cup last year but then the, the, we didn't have slowbro galarian and uh, well this thing is gonna shake up the meta for sure an extremely good generalist honestly i think this will be my favorite pokemon this meta it just has so much play versus everything just look at this losing matchups first the fire types with a little bit of energy advantage you can flip these uh, versus crafty if you just make sure you don't shoot a power up punch you can flip this as well and hit a focus blast on Licky Tongue. And you can flip this matchup as well. So uh, I think Slowbro Galarian is going to be an absolute monster. Be aware of it. Also be aware of Electrode. There are no ground types here. There are just only like a couple viable grasses. There's one dragon uh, in Drudigan. Uh, so Electric is really going to shine. And against all the Electric Towners, you can just hit them with Hyper Beam. And they're toast. So yeah, there's some extremely flexible options out there. I've only like scrape the surface at this point there's a lot more to be said about this meta but uh, i think it will be very very long so instead we're just gonna get into the teams now and i'll explain a little bit more uh about the meta along the way all right the first team i want to highlight is actually my favorite one from the first season of a uh, love cup like a year ago uh, but this team should still work incredibly uh well it's mainly centered around electrode and alamomola in the back they are just amazing generalists meaning they really don't have many hard losing matchups give them some energy give them a shield advantage and they can usually clean up very very nicely they have a couple pokemon they struggle with though mainly fighters and charmers and then grass types they really really struggle with but they really have play against all three of those groups but all three of those groups also get obliterated by the buck poisons Ariados or Scolipede, which one of those two you choose is really up to you. Uh, Ariados is really nice because it has that lunge for the debuff effect, but Scolipede has, has a poison jab for a little bit more fast move pressure, so it's really personal preference at that point. About Electrode, by the way, I would really recommend you run the regular Electrode with Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam is just really good coverage, can destroy those grasses uh, and like Drudigan really, really nicely. Uh, and, sh and Shadow, you don't want to run because the Shadow actually loses to Alola Mola in the Zero Shield and the Two Shield. So an Electric losing to a Water is not nice. So go with the regular because you actually do beat it. As far as Alola Mola goes, the moveset that goes, just Waterfall, Psychic and Hydro Pump. I don't think there's any reason for uh, for Blizzard in this meta. Instead you, unless you want to hit like Drudigan really hard. But, I mean, I think Psychic does enough there. Anyway, speaking of Jordigan, it is kind of a core breaker to this squad. Your best answer being uh, the poisons. And those are neutral at best. But, you know, Jordigan is so squishy that even Electrode and Alamola do have a lot of play versus it. 
Slowbro could also be a little bit of an issue. Of course, does very hard hitting, super effective confusion damage on the poisons. Uh, and also uh, walls uh, all over Mola. But again, the poisons do have access to bug moves. So can hit for super fe effective back. And you're also packing the electro to deal with those. So they'll be a little bit tough to deal with, especially if you see him in the lead. But it won't be that horrible. You can definitely deal with it. Same with Licky Tongue. Has play against all three of your Pokemon. But all three also have play against it. So, so you're going to have to play around it. But that should definitely be possible overall. I think it's a very balanced, solid squad that should be able to play ar ar around a lot of different scenarios. So have fun with it. The next team I want to show you is one I expect to be pretty common. It's Medicham Macargo Core, which is just an extremely solid duo. There's basically nothing that can kill both of them. Uh, besides maybe Slowbro. Slowbro really is the best core breaker here. But both Medicham and Macargo actually still have a lot of play versus Slowbro. So it's not that bad instead of macargo you could also go with a different fire type like talonflame but the nice thing about macargo is that it also destroys all other fires like talonflame which can be some trouble for a um, medicham so yeah overall medicham macargo is an extremely oppressive core a uh, parrot with a solid safe switch in the middle a flexible pokemon like Alomola, mola like licky tongue which can like force switch uh, when you have a shield up and you have just an extremely powerful uh, team yeah there's not much to say here except for uh try to keep switch advantage you know if you lose the lead try to go into your uh alola mola licky tongue whichever you decide to use and whatever comes in just try to force switch even if you have to go shield down that's usually the play with this squad and if you have metacham and macargo aligned properly you can usually just win the game next team i'm building around scrafty a pokemon i think is gonna be extremely hit or miss you know, Scrafty has extremely good matchups for his normal types like Licky Tongue, Chansey, destroys Macargo, also beats most of the water types and psychic types. Uh, and if you can get a couple of power punch boosts, like Foul Play will hit everything for very hard damage. Until you run into a Charmer or a Fighting type, that will ruin your day with Scrafty, which is why I'm pairing with two Pokemon in the back, which do either very well against fighting and charm in slow bro it does very well against both so both those typings and uh something then that de does decent against both of both of them in alabamola it does it doesn't generally it doesn't really beat the fighting types or charmers but it has a lot of play versus them an important part is that it an, is an extremely flexible pokemon when you're running something as inflexible as a scrafty I usually like pairing it with stuff that's very flexible to kind of make up for that. So you don't always need switch advantage to make it uh, work. And both Alolo Mola and Slowbro are like the most flexible Pokemon uh, in this meta. So yeah, I think they'll work very uh, nice together. If you have a bad lead with a squad, especially a fighter or a charmer, you definitely just want to go into Alolo Mola. It's your soft answer. Try to either win switch advantage, which, well, once you've got, once you've won switch advantage, it's basically GG. Scrafty, slow bro, if you align them properly, are very, 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 very good. Uh, and if you can't get switch advantage, at least try to get shield advantage, because slow bro, Galarian with shield advantage is gonna be really, really good in the back most of the time. So, yeah, that's the basics of this team. I do expect you're gonna have a little bit of trouble with Medicham lead, especially. Because, you know, it can uh, it can do some work against Alamo Mola as well. And Psychic on Slowbro hurts too. But you should be able to play around it still. Because, you know, it's crafty. That's your worst Pokemon against it. And if you get like a boosted foul play onto Metacham, it's still going to do a lot of damage. So you'll be able to play around it just fine. I feel like Scolipede could also be a bit of a problem. Has play against all three of her Pokemon. But the thing is so squishy that you should be able to, uh, to just out damage it. Out bulk it with the rest of your team. Next score I want to highlight is centered around Talonflame, number one on PvP Poke for a great reason. It's just an extremely good Pokemon, destroys Charmers, destroys Fighting types, and get a little bit boosted up. And that Brave Bird is going to destroy everything, even bulky waters like Aloha Mola will fear the Brave Bird if you're boosted once or twice. So yeah, extremely good, but does struggle versus a couple of Pokemon like Electrode, like water types like Aloha Mola still. Rock types like a Macargo really doesn't want to see it. Uh... 
And there are a couple Pokemon that will cover for those very nicely. The fighters like Crafty and Metacham do a great job at it. And Dragon does a really good job at it as well. Pair Talonflame with any of those three. Plus a good safe switch. And you've got a good team. I have two examples for you on the top right. Talonflame, Lickiting safe switch. And then uh, one of the three uh Talon Flame covers in the back, and that's a solid squad. You have a bad lead, you go into Licky Tongue, you hope to lure out like a fighter, maybe a charmer, and once that is gone, like Talon Flame plus whatever you have left in the back can probably just sweep the line. The one below that has, uh, well, Dragon, Scrafty, or Manor Cham in the lead. Galarian Slowbro as the safe switch. Since you're leading strong to like fire, uh, water, strong to electric. You're really hoping to lure that out with Galarian Slow, bro. Or you're even uh, you're also leading strong to Rock. So if they have Macargo, you hope they bring that out against Galarian Slow, bro, because that is a pretty decent matchup uh, for Macargo there actually. And once it's gone, you just get like sheer advantage. Tandem Flame and Shield Advantage will freaking sweep in the back. So yeah, both teams I think will work incredibly well. Also, both teams will be pretty meta. I think I won't be the only thing that thinks of this. It's a very, very simple team. So even if you're not going to run it, uh, please be aware that it probably will exist quite a bit. So have a strategy to counter it if you're not going to run it. Now, I have two Pokemon in the Core Breaker section this time. Both Slow Bros. But in reality, uh, yeah, they do okay versus, uh, versus both Talon Flame. And uh, whatever's in the back, but also whatever's in the back also has a lot of play versus them. So there just really aren't many great core breakers uh, for this, to be honest. But the slow rows definitely uh, do the best job at it. But in reality, you won't really have to worry that much. Final team I want to highlight features one of my favorite Pokemon to run in the Love Cup. It's more on the spicy side, but it's extremely fun. Shadow, Mech, Mortar. Or regular could work fine as well, but I love the power that the moves, the charge moves, especially of Shadow McMortar, have basically everything has to fear it. I'm running it with Karate Chop, Fire Punch, and Thunderbolt. And it's ran mainly as like a pivot uh, or like a safe switch in this squad. Because even if some of its counters come in, like a water type, it still has to fear the Thunderbolt. And it does so much. So, yeah, uh, that's why I really, really do love it. I'm leading it with... Uh, with either one of the slow bros would work fine here. I actually have an old video, like a very old video on this line on the channel, which, well, I won't be linking in the description because honestly, every time I look at my old videos, I kind of cringe. So if you want to see the video, you know, look it up, but don't be don't be too harsh, please. <laughs> but yeah, um, I ran with, uh, with regular slow bro back in the day. And one of the issues I had was charmers. Charmers are still an issue, because even though you have Mag Mortar, the thing is so squishy, it cannot really deal with Charmers. And Slowbro is decent versus Charmers, Kanto Slowbro is, but it's not amazing. Imagine, of course, loses. So, Galarian Slowbro would actually fix that issue, but you would be a little bit worse versus Water types. Like, Alamomola gets walled by Kanto Slowbro, and uh, you still beat Alamomola with Galarian Slowbro, but it's just a lot more tight. So, it just depends, do you want to be strong as Waters? Or do you want to be strong against Charmers? That is the, the, the decision you're going to have to make here. But yeah, then Medicham in the back. Just some bulk. Just some really nice uh, coverage uh, against everything. You know, it's just a, it's just a staple. And when you're running a, a, a glossy spice Pokemon like Magmortar, you're going to need something stable uh, to pair with it. And it happens to have some pretty good synergy with it, especially versus those rock types. Manorchamp will come in very, very handy. Steam definitely has some issues though, especially versus Galarian Slow King, actually. A Pokemon I haven't mentioned in this video at all, mainly because I feel like its brother, Slow Bro, just performs better. But with Hex Shadow Ball, it actually puts in so much work versus this team, destroying Manorchamp, destroying Slow Bro, and McMortar doesn't do great versus it as well. So you're going to have to watch out for it, but I also don't expect it to be that, that common, because like I said, I think... The other slow bros are just better. Charizard or Talonflame could also be some trouble, but you know, all three Pokemon do have play against it, so be aware of it. Know how to beat it, and then you should be a uh, should be alright. So overall, pretty fun team. Again, not one I would really rank recommend you to climb with. I think it's a bit more on the spicy side, but definitely a fun one. So enjoy it. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Good luck with your battles.